So, you know, Turk, everyone that meets Birdman nowadays, it's kind of like the situation where Birdman is smoking the blunt. He's wearing the shades. He pulls down the shades like, I'm going to sign you. Did you come across Birdman in the same way? Um, Nah, I wanted to, like, I'm going to tell you something, like, Birdman got this aura, right? And he still got it, bro. Like, a lot of niggas will talk a lot of shit about Birdman. I wouldn't go fuck with him in this, this, that. But any nigga that had the opportunity to go sign with Stunt, and that's what be going on, you feel me? No matter the reputation of what you done heard, you know what I'm saying? He always had a reputation, but, you know, he also a genius. So, you know what I'm saying? If you got an opportunity to want to get next to a genius, I think that's what be going on, you feel me? People be infatuated with that shit, you feel me? I respect Birdman as a man now, dog. Like, you know, I don't I don't look at Birdman like how I used to look at him when I was a youngster. You know what I'm saying? I just look at him as another man. I'm not in, I'm not impressed by nobody watching necklace, earrings, and grill. You feel me? I look at him as a man. I got respect for him. You feel me? But I don't move like that. If the business ain't right, I ain't moving with nobody. You feel me? It's all business with me. Um, can you remember it for me, Turk? Like, what song did Birdman hear from you that wowed him and made him say, I got to sign this guy? Uh, or was it the it freestyle era? Nah, it wasn't Birdman. It really was Slim. Slim took a liking to me. You know what I'm saying? I rapped the Slim at a DJ, and Slim gave me a card. It just was basically my determination, dog. Like, because at the time, I, I didn't even know how to rap that good. You feel me? Like, I wasn't like that. Nigga, I probably had about four, five rap. You feel me? But I had the determination. You know, like, when you know, man, look, man, yeah, this is what I want, nigga. Da, da. And by me being project, you know, and I got a co-sign from Magnolia Shorty. So the co-sign, but I didn't have no raps to back it up. But I put myself in a position, and now I know I have to come in there, you know. And then I hooked up straight with Lil Wayne. So hooking up with Lil Wayne out the gate. That made me start writing. But I went to them nigga. I had five raps, nigga. Like, Wayne used to have a big notebook full of that shit. So that shit was inspiring. He was the young, the youngest. But that shit was inspiring. You feel me? I ain't never let them nigga know. Nigga, I got five raps, nigga. Nigga, I, nigga I'm about to be with Cad Money. I wasn't signed with him or nothing. I couldn't let them know I had five raps, though. You feel me? So I played my role, played my part, man, and shit. I was in the right place at the right time and became a hot boy. And I just held that shit down and got better with time. You know what I'm saying? Who were the original members supposed to be of the Hot Boys? It was really five of us. You know what I'm saying? Um, they had this this place called Pen and Pex. We went to Texas, man, and we took our pictures. It was BG Derek. He that's baby nephew, his real blood nephew. Um, baby, um, Derek mommy is baby sister. All right. yeah, it was it was us four. I mean, it was five of us. It was five of us. We took pictures, man. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't work out. You know what I'm saying? It, I don't. It ain't work out, man. They broke it down the four. You feel me? I made the cut. Um, BG Derek, he was a solo. They made him a solo artist. So, yo, I want to ask you about everyone's participation in the Hot Boys. How was it originally connecting with the Hot Boys? I'm asking, what are your earliest memories of joining the group? We were just like family, dog. Like, it just, you know, rapping just was a way of life. You feel me? We just go to the studio. We loved doing that shit. It was a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Everything. We did everything together. You feel me? We was one little family. and um. We just made money just from doing the shit that we love to do, you know, and the shit just took off like it took off in a few years. You feel me? Uh, hard work. But a lot of people don't understand, man. We were jumping off the tour bus. Nigga, we used to have to wear the T-shirts with the record label, with the, with the song that's coming out. Say if it's BGL. We had the BG shirts on with Chopper City. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was walking billboard. We was walking billboard. We was the promo team. Nigga, we was the media. Nigga, we was everything. Us six. You feel me? Then, you know, all the people that was around us. And, you know, like, we we put in work. Dog. A lot of people don't understand. Like, this shit ain't just happen overnight. You know, everybody played their role, played their part. 
I remember, man, shit, we used to jump on a hot ass tour bus. We'd be deep on that bitch, you know what I'm saying? But we went and did what it do, you know what I'm saying? And that shit just led to a nigga having four tour buses, you feel me? Like, that's why I say, man, any youngsters that's out there grinding, don't try to live your life based off of people highlights because the highlights could just be that. You know what I'm saying? You will never see the struggle, never see the hustle. Because now people don't want people to see them down and trying to get up because that don't get respected these days. You feel me? But if you down and you know you hustling, you grinding, just stay focused, stay consistent, man, and things going to work out. You know what I'm saying? When the Hot Boys, uh, when the Hot Boys that got together, the first album dropped in 1997. Get it how you live. You and Lil Wayne were the two from the group that had never released an official project before. Can you detail how things changed after Get It How You Live dropped for the Hot Boys? After, after Get It How You Live, I really came out my shell. Like, you know what I'm saying? We had the movie script, you know, um, Ball of Blocking. You know, we shot that for like a month. And um, I happened to get a lot of good parts because at the time, my parts really were supposed to be BG parts, but BG was um, going through, you know, his real personal problem where he had to go check in and shit. So we didn't follow the script, you know what I'm saying? By me being from the Magnolia, I was there all the time, nigga on time, early, bam, bam, bam. It was a lot of opportunity for me pulling up and being on time, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I was able to do all the parts. You know, me shooting the mail, man, that wasn't my part. That was BG part. BG was supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? But um, I did that. You feel me? So after Baller Block, it came out. I was like, damn, it's my time. Now. It's my time. You feel me? And I just was, I was sensing it, dog. But I had my little personal problems and shit still going on with me fighting my demons. You know, even though I was ready for the world because they had been anticipating my shit, you know what I'm saying? The personal demons had then got to me, so that shit was holding me back, fighting cases and in and out of jail, and, you know, album out, can't really promote it, you know what I'm saying? So it was all kind of shit, dog, you know, like real life shit going on. Like one thing about nigga was really like out there Thugging for real, you know what I'm saying? Which is stupid in the motherfucker, but like nigga was trying to live what they were rapping, dog. Feel me? 